Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to everybody around the world. Welcome back to another One Piece video featuring your boy, Blue Yellow Ace. Get ready for a very, very exciting deck profile featuring EB01, ST13, and OP06, and which I'm very excited to bring to you guys. You guys were very much interested in seeing an Ace list here on the channel. Now, do keep in mind there are numerous different ways to build Ace. But he does fall into being either consistent or not consistent. This deck is very, very hard to make work unless you are running a specific key amount of cards. Which is unfortunate right now, but in OP07, the deck does gain a little bit more flexibility. Considering the fact that we gain access to a brand new ace in the format. Such as this ace here, let alone in OP08, we also get access to this ace as well. But mainly this one. Essentially, this makes the deck a little bit more consistent, which is really, really good, and it's what it's lacking right now. In any case, I've tried making this package, or this deck in itself, without the Garp, without the Ace here, without the, you know, the Sabo, the Luffy. I've tried to do it. I failed miserably, considering that this makes the deck the most consistent by adding in, you know, the packages of, like, the little Luffys, the little Aces, and the little Sabos and the big ones, all that sort of thing. You need that in the deck to make it function. Now, I will see, like, probably Andy down in the comment section saying, no, you don't. I've, I've created the deck, and it does well without XYZ. Realistically, competitive-wise, if you're looking to be serious when it comes to playing with Ace, let's say you want to take this to, like, a regional event or a tournament or any of that, you want it to be consistent. And the downside with Ace's leader ability and the way it works, running any other tech card in the list, like my Kaido here, putting uh, Flampe, you know, Sanji's Pilaf, Raging Tiger, X-Drake, all of these cards hurt the deck when it comes to consistency, right? Because these are some of these are five costs being X-Drake. But uh, unlike the Rush Ace or, you know, the Luffy here or Sabo, I cannot cheat x Drake off the top of my life, place it on board, get a power up by getting 2,000 power boost, you know, as you would off the little ones. x Drake doesn't work that way. Pudding doesn't work that way. You know what I mean? And that's where the consistency hurts the deck a little bit, because it has to be specific cards that you can make pop off to make sure your leader gets that boost. Now, again, with OP07, that, that's coming around the corner here. We gain access to this ace, which gives this deck a little bit more consistency, which it really needs right now. On a side note, we have a lot of fun cards that we can actually use here. It's just how you build the deck, how it flows, because you got to keep in mind that the way this guy's leader ability works, you attach two Dawn, for those of you guys that are new here, you attach two Dawn, you look at five cards on top of your deck, you place one character of five costs, not not or more, not less, it has to be A5 on top of your life. So that would be Ace, um, Monkey D. Luffy, Sabo, X Drake, any other five costs like Satori, they go on top of your life. At the end of your turn, that card goes to the trash, considering that that is your leader ability. It sends all face-up cards to the trash. Now, do keep in mind, there are other cards that you can play around that, such as, like, Flampe here. If you end up getting x Drake and that goes on top of your life, you can play down a Flampe. This allows you to draw the x Drake, and then you can draw one from the top of your deck. So, essentially, you drew two cards for one Dawn, which x Drake was, was going to go to the trash, but considering you played this, you got a plus one, which is really, really nice. There's other ways to go about it as well with cards such as Viola, which is very, very strong in this deck, I think. And it's very good against other yellow decks as well, such as like uh, Enel or Katakuri, because you can reorganize their last life when you're going for game, which is pretty interesting. But without further ado, we're going to talk about some of the opening hands here with this leader, talk about some honorable mentions and all that sort of thing before we dive into a bunch of games here let alone why I chose my certain tech cards that I did, 
And for the record, for the very first game, I think we're going to showcase you this build here. And I'm going to show you my other ace build for the rest of the video. We had a really, really good Sabo game earlier. And we were playing with x Drake in, in that particular list. I wanted to showcase this list as well and, you know, how we did with it. But speaking of other lists, this is going to be my main ace deck for the channel for the foreseeable future until OP07 comes out. I cut down on my Kaidos, we went down to two. We upped to three when it comes to pudding instead of four. I wanna see this at least once every game if possible, but I feel like having four of these do cut the consistency of the deck because I wanna make sure I'm actually seeing the Sabos, the Luffy's and the Aces more so than I'm getting puddings in my hand, more so than I'm getting Kaidos in my hand, if that makes sense. I will draw into these more than likely with like a peel off effect. I mean, it's not guaranteed, but you know, most of the time I will. And then of course we also included in the five cost Yamato. And you can, if you want to, you don't have to. I chose to run this over the other five drop, which should be something like Satori. In this circumstance, the rush on play is irrelevant not important it's never going to happen it's the on play ability that is more desirable to me than just getting a satori on board this is only useful in this list particularly if your opponent attacks you and then you trigger this off life putting this to the top of your life with aces ability doesn't really help you all too much unless you have a play going forward such as viola or um the one drop flampe which allows you to, you know, draw that card. Or essentially you could also do the other one drop, which is Makino. Does it does the same thing as Flampe except for the, except for you're able to like organize your life. Right? So you could put Satori on top, you can put Yamato on top, and then hit him with that Makino. You know? But each the road. I chose the Yamato just because I can organize my cards if I needed to in dire situations. That's it. And then of course we do keep the Hiyori because this allows you to you know, do three brother stuff and set up your plays, get your big bodies down in the early game. And my spicy tech for this list is gonna be Viola, of course. This is a very, very good card. I don't see a lot of decks running. I have seen some that do run it. Again, it does hurt consistency a little bit, but it makes up for it because this is able to heal you, which is really, really cool. How so? In a scenario where you plop down an ace, and let's say you have a Luffy or you know an ace here or Sabo, and you don't have any babies that you know put them on board, you can essentially drop the Viola, activate her ability, and flip that that five drop that was on top of your life face down. That way it doesn't go to the trash at the end of the turn with your leader ability. Therefore, you heal the life, which is really really strong. Or again, you can reorganize all your opponent's cards. And then we've added in two Raging Tigers. This is a personal preference. You don't have to run it. I just feel it's it's very, very nice into like a lot of the format here, especially like Black Yellow Luffy and going into decks like such as Rage You. This just allows you to remove cards that they can no longer gain access to because it goes to the bottom of their deck instead of in the trash, which is really good and helps slow down tempo, especially for your opponent. Other than that, let me show you guys some opening hands here and some honorable mentions that we'll play a bunch of games today and we'll do our thing. A lot of these cards here that you see have value in Ace in some way, shape, or form. And I've had, and I've already done different lists here consisting of a lot of these cards here. So I do have like my favorites and, and all that sort of thing. Yes, that's a soul focus. I've tried it, I enjoy it. It's just that five cost, that's not something that I can put on top of my life, essentially, and play it down. So that does suck in that regard. But things like Dofi here, X-Drake, and Duval, these are all really, really good to include into Ace. Just keep in mind that it feels awkward when you're going for that first search and these happen to pop up. You can't draw this for later, unless again, you have like a Flampe effect or you have a Sanji on board to take that life and then do all these different shenanigans to make sure you can 
take the extract off the top or the dofi or something of that nature it feels weird for example if i'm playing queen and i do something like perona and i set up my next play with uh you know dofi and then extract you know all in it kind of synergizes well in this build you don't gain that luxury because it's either you use this ability or you use this ability you can't really do one or the other you can't pick or choose because those five cards either go to the top or they go to the bottom whether it's the leader or whether it's like an extra but sometimes he does hit and it does help you set up a future play I just feel it's very inconsistent, especially for this particular build, which is Ace. Now, you have other options here, such as Sanji and Daifuku, which they do the exact same thing. You can, except for, I think Daifuku is a little bit better, consider he's one Don and he's when he attacks. You're able to take the top card from either the top or bottom of your life area, add it to your hand, and then swap one from the top of your deck to the top of your life area, which is pretty good. They both do the exact same thing, except for Sanji is also a 2k, so keep that in mind. You have a very, very powerful card in Shifon, in which you guys are not going to see in a lot of ace decks. This allows you to trash the top or bottom of your life and place one card from the top of your deck to your life. So just like Sanji, Daifuku, except for this is on play instead of on attack. Shirahoshi, of course, being that 5 drop, this is a very, very good card in this deck considering that you can put it up there with Ace with the leader ability. Draw into it with Flampe or um, Makino and make sure you have the Shirahoshi in hand to play down for five if you need to. It's just dire situations. She allows you to draw three and then trash two cards, which is also really, really good here. It allows you to cycle dead cards out of your hands, which you have a lot here in this deck, especially if you don't see the baby, you know, the babies. You have cards such as Raging Tiger for the removal, Red Rock for the removal. I don't normally use both in the list. I prefer one or the other, and I've been taking Raging Tiger. I think this does a little bit better for me. When it comes to bigger bodies here, you have Katakuri and Lin Lin. I'm going to tell you now, Katakuri is a trap. Don't fall for it, especially in Ace. How so? If you use this offensively, Fair enough. If you're moving like an A-cost kid on your opponent's side of the board or what have you, you're moving some sort of body, awesome. But if you're using this to quote-unquote heal yourself, keep in mind how this works. You play down this card, right? You have two Dawn left over. That two Dawn either goes for your search for your leader ability or you're putting that two Dawn you're attaching to something to swing, right? Let's be fair. Now, as soon as you decide to, I'm a heal one, what happens? That card goes to the top of your life or bottom. At the end of the turn, it goes to the trash because of Ace's ability. So essentially, you are removing a body on your side of the field to heal that just gets immediately trashed at the end of the turn. Just the way Ace works, that's all. So be a little bit mindful when you are or if you are using Katakuri in an Ace build here. And then you have cards such as Thunderbolt, Soul Pocus, and Queen Mama Shanther. These are cards I like to use for healing. Whereas in Ace's case, if you activate his leader ability, you get that five to the top of your life. You can plop down a Thunderbolt because the cards can go to the trash anyhow and just go ahead and clear a target on board for free. A five cost or lower, which is really, really nice. Soul Pocus, of course, you pick or choose, or they pick or choose to heal one or give you a life. The same thing as a seven cost mom. Both of these cards have a little bit of value here in this deck. I think I would prefer the 7 cost mom over the soul focus in this particular build of ace because this gives me a little bit of a late game body. It does hurt the consistency because it's not a 5 drop, but at the end of the day, it's an 8k with a 7 that has a very very powerful ability that you can make work in this build. And then you have the stage. Let me put you on something, let me cook, this is a very very good card here in this list. It's just. What happens is, you rest this stage, you add one card from the top or bottom of your life here to your hand. That's awesome, right? But why would you want to take your life points away on purpose, just to draw one every single time? Think of it like this. Ace takes a 5 cost, puts it to life, you activate the stage, 
you essentially got to draw a free card because you ripped the card away from your life that Ace put up there. Normally you do this if you can't make use of that card that you put on top of your life for that turn. And then essentially you just draw it instead of it going to trash. The second effect here, it's irrelevant. You don't have to worry about it. Place up to one character with a cost of three on top of the owner's life face up. And that's one of yours. That's irrelevant because if you do something like that, again, fall into a trap. Whereas, let me go ahead and try to incorporate three drops into the deck. So something like Delflamingo, for example. Activate this ability. You draw a card on top of your life, you know, with Ace's leader ability. Cool, you got a plus one. Now it says you may place, or it says you place up to one character with a cost of three on top of the owner's life. So you can take the Dofi to put back on top of your life to heal one. But just remember, it's face up. So it will go to the trash at the end of the turn. So the second effect on this is irrelevant. You just heal and then draw for free with Ace and Shanter. That's about it. But either way, we're going to dive into a bunch of games today. I will see you guys in a split second. Let's get at it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We're going to dive into a bunch of games today. Coming at you guys with Blue, Yellow, Ace. Hopefully, we do well. I mean, I'm not going to hold my breath. I'm trying my best with this leader. I'm having a lot of fun with it. It just feels like a little bit lackluster currently right now in our format versus like Sabo and Black Yell Luffy. But uh, he's a lot of fun to play. This is for sure. This isn't something I would take to like an online regionals or going to a regional event. Not yet anyway. Not until OPO 7 drops and we get the other ace and so we can play around with the uh, consistency and the different build setups here that we can make. Right now, it's very, very strong if it hits, when it lands. If not, you feel a little bit, wow, that sucks, you know? But in any case, let's go ahead and dive into these games here and try the best that we can do. We are playing against Sabo, and I know this is going to be a very, very tough matchup. And he's also using the two-cost event, which is kind of spicy. I don't see that a lot. He's already organized all of his life, so he knows what he has up here, which does suck. But I think we can kind of play around it. I don't know how I feel about x Drake here in this deck. I like the fact that I'm able to get a body on board that allows me to protect myself versus like Katakuri, for example. Because they swing for 7, x Drake's a 6, drop a 2k, I'm chilling. But being able to organize top 5, and then I have to play Ace's leader ability, it just feels a little bit like self-intuitive, I guess. You know, you kind of hurt yourself a little bit, I think. But you do get that blocker on board that does allow you to protect yourself a little bit. Which I really much like that. It's just, this is not a queen. This is not Dofi, this is not Boa, for example, no PO7. Where I'm playing down like a Perona, then a Doflamingo, then an x -Drake To like set up my future self. I'm just going to lead her ability and then put him to bottom anyway. So, but some people enjoy it. I don't know how I feel about X-Drake just yet. Should I guard out here? Nah. We'll just give him a 2k counter. I'll try to keep the X-Drake in at least to attack into him next turn. We've got 7 here. This could be essential. Like, we know what cards come up next. We know we had the Luffy. But everything else has to go to the trash. Or to the bottom of the deck, sorry. So that does suck a little bit. But at least we get the 2k boost and we can put Luffy down on board. Which is kind of nice. Then we have 3 Dawn that we have nothing else that we can do with it. So we might as well just go 10k to face. He'll take this hit. And then we can attack here with x Drake as well. Just go 8. There's no reason not to attack with him. He's going to block a hit here anyway if he decides to attack into it to remove it. Which I would think he would. If not, yo, hmm, thank you. He already knew what the rest of his life was as well with the Dragon King over there. Kika Nojo. This is going to be something we have to play around. It's going to be a pain in the butt. Yep. Goes to six. Two Dawn left. Raise Max. Okay. I did not expect to see that. So I think he's going to try to clear X-Drake here. I'm not going to guard it. You got it. 
He did his job, man. He blocked an attack. We got a damage in with him. Seven. I'm okay with taking this here. We get the Sabo off that, which is really nice. And another draw card, so... This could be pretty huge. We can play down Sanji's Pilaf, and then do Ace's leader ability, and go from there. We get a Flampe here as well. So in case we don't get anything relevant... And we actually got another Luffy, so this is pretty good. Let's do the thing. Give us the power boost, go back up to 7k for the turn. Two Dawn open. It's probably better just to attach and just go smacking. But I don't want to give him a Kikinojo here, which... So maybe we just clear the ko Koala for now, instead. He doesn't have anything on board that he can just bounce back to the top of his life without having to spend the Dawn to play it on board first. So we'll pass it up for now. This is a little dangerous, but I don't want to give him an extra body on board that he can just swing and bounce back up there. I'd rather him spend the resources to play something down, whether it has Rush or not. Oh, Katakuri. All right. I do like this. Katakuri in Sabo is a lot of fun. I'm not going to spoil my list, but, you know, it's a, it's a lot of fun. 7k to face. I can give him the Luffy here, or the 2k Flampe. I don't really want to give him the babies, but if I have to, I have to. It makes sense, I guess. This might be a little awkward, but perhaps we just go 5 to face. And he just takes it and takes the Katakuri. Like, he put it there. Like, why wouldn't he want it? Okay. How about six? He kind of ruined my whole my whole plan here. Because I was just going to drop the Kaido down. Assuming he was just going to take the Katakuri and the Kikinojo. But for some reason, he decides to guard out here. Which is a little weird. Alright, let me cook. Let me cook. Hold on. Give me a second. Hold on. We're going to have to attach two Dawn to leader and then do the uh, the ace ability. Which does suck because it's backwards. I just figured he would give me the two life so we can play Kaido down and then draw three cards. But not today, apparently. Let's go ahead and get ace down here. Get the power up again. That's one. There's no other shot we can, uh, we can do another one. But we can play the Garp down to get a search off. These are all pretty pretty good. Unfortunately, we have to take the Sabo. Now we should be able to get the, the Katakuri off life. Or I guess we can play Sabo. All right, now we gotta commit. Let's go eight here. Yep. Okay, so three life left. Perhaps he spends time here going for my board instead of my leader, which is definitely okay. Because again, we have another ace to replace ace if he decides to run into that, or a Luffy. Karasu. Okay, so he's going for bodies, which is nice. He's got four cards left in hand. We know one of them is a Katakuri. So when it comes to counter, he doesn't have much left. The Bella Betty's in the bottom of his life as well. So that's another 1k. We don't know what the next two cards are going to be, but it might be safe to say we can go for a game here really, really soon. If we can survive this turn. Because he has three Dawn up, potentially for Zoro, after he bounces the Kikinoja back to top of life. I do want to keep Ace here on board. I feel like that's important. Oh wow, okay, so he does not have Zoro. Awesome. You got it, buddy. Two Dawn left to play with. Nothing. So maybe another Dragon uh, dragon Flame? I think that's what it's called, right? The two drop? Let's test it. Let's go six. There's the Dragon King. Huh. This makes things easier. Cool. Okay, so now he has a 1k counter. Katakuri in hand. We could drop the Kaido. Or I could push this. Let's try pushing it. We got the Bello Betty. This is nice, actually. Because we drew into... Essentially 4k counter. With the Hiori and the two little ones. 
Next turn, we can go for game. Okay, so Morley. Katakari is still in hand. Bounces, sure. This will make the leader a 4k for this turn if he swings with Karasu. Alright. I mean, what do you want me to do here? If he has a Zoro, he also hits me with that as well. Another 1k. Oh, he's just going for it. I mean, that's fine with me. I'm trying to think. Is it worth it here? I think we need this last life just in case we can play around with it with Hiyori. Well, it's just a lot of counter from hand. Next turn, we can win the game. He has two cards on top of life with no counter. At the very least. One Katakuri in hand. I think we're chilling, guys. I think we're chilling. Both Luffy's can go up to 8k this turn with their abilities. Let's do the thing. Oh, it's actually perfect. We get the Sabo, we get the power up here with the Ace Leader. I think we're chilling. Let's go ahead and get this on board. Or we can do the ace. If we if we take the Sabo, he can't swing. If we play down Hiyori instead, if we can put the big ace on top, play down a little ace, and then we have another unit that we can potentially hit this turn. So that would be one, two, four, five, six attacks. Five attacks at the very least. Let's do it this way. I'll put Ace on top of life. And then we'll do the baby thing. Yep. So now we have... Yeah, we have six attacks this turn. Three cards in hand. Two of them. Three of them have no counter. I don't know why I did that. I should have just swung eight. Because that would have been guaranteed either way. Okay, so we had another 1k in hand. This is free. This attack is also free. Yep. 12k, and then 12k of Kaido. Ooh, that was clean, boys. That was clean. I'm pretty sure this is one of those matchups where everybody has trouble into Black, Yellow, Luffy. And I feel like, as Ace, I think people approach this matchup a little bit different. You know what I mean? Like, I think you only need one card here, which is Pudding, to generally win this game. On top of having Viola. I think Viola in this deck, speaking of Pudding, I think Viola in this deck versus Luffy is kind of just detrimental, considering we can just rearrange life. So he wants to draw and put cards in trash for later on and filter out his ability, which is fine, but we're not going to give him the Shiro Hoishi right now. I'd rather give him the small guys, at the very least. This way, if he's forced to drop down Makino, that's totally okay. It's going to go 6 kid face, so we'll give him a little baby here. Assuming he takes the damage. Most Luffy's kind of do. I want to get him as many cards as I can in hand before we decide to drop the pudding. He's at 7 now. Hopefully he drops down a Flampe or a uh, Makino here. So he can draw one. 4 done open. The next one is another baby as well. Sweet, there's a Makino. Draw his card, sure. So now he has two babies in hand that we know of, so that's two 1k counters. Which is great, considering the fact that we're about to shuffle them all back in the deck. Reorder the life. So that means Shirahoshi is probably going to be on top for the next hit. Which is great, because we're going to go ahead and attack him for five. And then hopefully he takes the hit and just does the draw. And we can punish him after that. Actually, let's go six. This way we don't have like an awkward Dawn floating over. Alright, so here's Shirahoshi. 
capture. It should be another five cost. Yep. Sorry, buddy. Like, I feel like putting into yellow decks just in general is just... It's detrimental, man. Because they do a lot of searches with the one-drop puddings to search out the Big Moms and the Shuras to search out, like, the Rygos, I Am God, you know, the, the key pieces for Skypea. And putting just comes in and just recycles your whole hand is just really, really good. Especially when you're going for a game against decks like Katakuri and No. Which I do feel like Ace has a better time into Katakuri. I could be wrong. Just with how I've been playing the deck as of, as of late. And that's assuming you don't whiff out on all of your abilities for, for your leader skill. Not that you have to have a perfect game, just, you know, hit some of them, right? Let's go ahead and do the Sabo. Thankfully, we found him off that. Otherwise, we'd have to burn the life with the Hiori and then stack it that way. Which feels terrible every time you do it. I don't want to burn a life here. We could pop the, the ace, but I don't think that's worth it. I think we need the life in this matchup. I think it's very, very important here. So we get double attacks off here with, with putting in myself. Does he have the counter in hand, though? Okay, cool. So that means next turn we can just win. We can clear this. Keep him at one life. The reason being why you do this and why I didn't decide to take the life is you want them to play cards down to spend resources to take their own life. In that case, essentially they have less other bodies to play on board if they have to spend their own dawn to remove their life there. You don't want to make it easier for them. I get it, he's at one, so he only has to play Machino down. Sure, right, but he still had to spend the dawn to do it. And that's one less 2k you have to worry about. This is probably one of those scenarios where he's trying to figure out how he can survive to get that life. To make it say zero. Because next turn we win. If he doesn't clear board here. Oh, this is smart. That's good. Alright. So we got there. Hmm. Okay. Fair. Jakomori goes trash. Remember, he has an ace and a Luffy in trash already. So I imagine that's what he puts back, yep. So now he goes back up to two life here. You know what? Let's keep the pudding. Let's guard out of this. Call me crazy. But he's got two cards in hand. We should be able to win this game. We have to go... I guess we can go eight. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can go eight here. Okay, that's one. And good game. Let's go, boys. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and dive into another one here. Coming at you guys with Blue Yellow Ace playing into Newgate. In which, I don't know how to go about this matchup, to be honest with you. This is something that uh, we don't have a lot of practice with, let's be fair. Uh, with Blue and Yellow Ace into this current meta, because not a lot of people play Newgate. And especially at my local scene, where we house about 30 to 40 people on every on average daily, which is pretty nice. And not a lot of people play Newgate, which is a little interesting to me. But I'd imagine this matchup could be pretty good in your favor as long as you guys can see. You big boys. That way it makes your leader a 7k and Newgate has to invest Dawn to swing, which he generally doesn't do that, essentially, because he wants to keep that Dawn up for events and or playing stuff on board. So it might be a little bit easier in that scenario. I could be reading it into it wrong, but this guy decides to go 8k, which is a little weird. Um, sure. Ain't much else we're going to do about that. We do have a really, really cracked hand right now, as long as we can see at least one big brother here. We're chilling. We have the Hiyori as well to plant the Sabo if need be. I kind of want to go for it. I know it's a little greedy. It might just be a safer play to just put the... Um, the Sabo in top and then play down the, the other Sabo and do it that way. But we lose a life in that scenario. Oh, good. It paid out. That's nice. Because I think going down to two life, obviously, this early in the game against Newgate is probably not what I want to do. We can take the Luffy because we have 
multiple baby Luffy's here. We can save Sabo for later if need be. Let's go and get this on board. We can go 9k here. There should be a guaranteed damage unless he gives me a lot of cards from hand. Because he needs 5k counter to get out of this. I think it's likely I just do the damage here. Now the key card to find in this matchup, which we didn't get in the opening, is Puddin. And considering what Puddin allows me to do, you know, put back Newgate's hand, allow us him to draw five, that in itself, depending on what stage in the game you decide to drop it, just wins you the game, just that one card alone. What are you gonna do here, man? You have five Dawn active. You can play down Marco. You can play down a, a Rusher with, with Luffy here. You can play Ace down if he chooses to. Or not Ace, sorry. Why did I say Ace? Marco is what I was gonna say. But that's fine. Sure, buddy. But that's the thing, though. I was a 7k leader there. He couldn't even hit me with Newgate without developing a body first. So we decided to attach Dawn. He couldn't put Marco down in that scenario. We have Viola here as well. It's not really going to do all too much against Newgate, so that's unfortunate. Let's try it again. Speaking of pudding, that's a hard whiff. And that's the downside to this leader sometimes, man. Like, that one card there just changes this game in my favor drastically. But instead, we have to force the life play with the Hiori to put the ace on life to do the baby ace, go down to two. Do we get an attack in, though? Because we're allowed to now, but... It just sucks because we had to take the life in order to do this because we missed the leader skill. Another 9k here. Sure. We'll take that. Can I have another? Thank you. That is three 2k counters from his hand already. That was a big play. That was a lot of cards we got out of his hand. So now he has to clear board, I think. I don't know if he can survive another onslaught like that. Unless he has a bunch of events. Oh, definitely not now. He is going to clear board, though. Yep. So we, we go up to 8 Dawn next turn. Mm. Yeah, sure. This we can counter out. And it's probably better to do that. We probably won't see another Luffy for a while, so that's that's fine. And watch, right off this search, we'll get one. It's about to feel real bad. We can also hard cast Sabo. If we get a 5 drop here. So, look, like I said, there's a Luffy. That's crazy, man. Hmm. I guess if all else fails, we can drop down the Garp and hope we find the baby. We do. We're in business. Let's get this down, go to 7k. Just make it a little bit more difficult for him to hit me here. We have enough Dawn up for one blocker, which might save us the following turn, unless he has Robin. That'll at least eat up one attack. I don't really care about board here, I'm just trying to pressure the hand. Just in case he does have another Marco, we can just pop it with our Sabo and then go face. I mean, he's got no life at this moment, so. So now we are in Newgate territory for the 9 drop. If he doesn't have it here, we might be able to win. But even if he does, we can just go all Dawn on leader and go for game. Or on Luffy, actually. Because he'll be an 8k, right? Alright, so there's the Robin. Because we're taking both of these hits no matter what. Which is unfortunate. Alright, cool. So we got a 2k counter to guard out of the Newgate swing. Which I'll we'll probably have to dump our hand for, but uh, it's probably worth it. We'll take this one too. I want him to think we don't have... We'll counter out of this one. Hopefully, he thinks we don't have counter. Three Dawn open. We'll counter out here. That's three events he possibly has in hand, or he's baiting me just to go swing. I think playing Kaido here is probably the wrong play. Because then we just lose. And he's got seven cards left in hand that I have to deal with. We need to hit a Sabo off this to go to 7k. 
That's a big gamble. Speaking of Sambo. We might be able to get there, to be honest. We might be able to. Can we get six? This will get a counter out of hand. She got three Dawn open. Luffy swings for what, 17k? Right? That's math? That's a lot of counter he needs to get out of this, even with he, with having events here. I think this should be game here. Okay. Nice. Our hand is actually pretty cracked. You know? Like, we didn't even have to mulligan in this one. This is actually really, really good. And this is what I want to see in these matchups versus an L. Kind of like when I'm playing with um, Yamato. Pudding is my Hody Jones in this match. Just because on how Anel plays the game. You gotta be a little bit mindful here when dealing damage. Most Anel players just take the life. Considering that all of their events come online, or the big ones, when they're at 1. At Raigo, I am God. You know what I mean? Like, and they can just constantly keep healing up with Yamatos and stuff. It only gets worse once OPO 7 comes out with the new Ace, but still. Currently, the easiest way I've learned to deal with this is just constantly keep going face. Clear board when I get an opportunity to with the Sabos or if his units are rested. But make sure he's drawing cards to be able to putting him before you go for a game. Because all of the, the big body units that he's drew into or he's cycled through life with Shirahoshis, all that sort of thing. Everything is a prime target when you have the pudding ready to go. And I feel like that's one of your key pieces in this matchup. We, might have, we should have just went 8, but I think he would just take it a hit anyway. Now we just play down Garp here. Alright, so we get the Baby Saba, which is really good. So next turn, we have to hit either Sabo or Bust, right? Oh, never mind. I'm going to counter out here. I know it might be a little crazy. And I don't want to give him the pudding. So we're going to give him Luffy and Sabo. Not the little one, but the big one. I don't want to show him that we have pudding. You know what I mean? Because otherwise he'll start playing stuff or being a little cautious of what he does. Keeping Nojo here. If we get the Sabo here, we are going to pop the Kikinojo, regardless if he heals a life or not. Please. Nice. Cool. If we would have whiffed, we would have been in a bad situation. Because that's two hits that we don't have counter for. That he's going to come off next turn. Not including, like, if he's running Big Mom. That's also a Big Mom play, you know what I mean? Let's go ahead and get this on board. Unfortunately, if we pop the Kikinojo, we still he still heals. Because we have to burn the life, so. But one less attacker. He should take this. Cool. Alright, so us being at 7k here is a little bit more difficult for him to actually get in and do attacks and get a body on board. Unless he just drops another Kikinojo here and then just swings at me for 8k. Okay. Hey, love to see it. Let's go. Draw more cards. I'm, I'm totally okay with this. Totally fine with me, buddy. Katakuri. I like it, actually. It's pretty good. Especially in the metagame where there's a lot of removal. And as an L, you're generally going down to, like, less life than your opponent by taking hits. Oh, this is huge. Sure. I'm so sorry this has to happen. I'm going to attack into him, actually. Before we drop the pudding here. Just in case that's like a um a Shirahoshi or it might just be an Onami though, to be honest. We can't get anything off this, that does suck. That goes two aces go in the trash, essentially, the bottom of the deck, same thing. Seven seven. I think at least maybe one damage here might be worth it. Let's put in though. Because if we push him down to one, he's in prime to just drop Yamato and heal up as well. It might be a little awkward here if we pass turn, but it's probably better to pass turn here. 
He can't Yamato yet. Oh wait, never mind. Yeah, he can. He can Yamato next turn, my bad. Math is hard. Hmm. Let's just go for it. If he has it, he has it. Oh, it's a Kiki Nojo. That's my bad. I was hoping that would be something, anything but that. I think if he had Yamato, it might have been in, in his other hands. Hey, he's running Big Mom. We'll trash ours. We should be good here. Even if he goes, swings with Kika Nojo, Katakuri, and Leader, I think we're chilling. He's got five cards in hand. As long as that's not a Beji or a zero cost event, I think we can win next turn. I mean, it, it's all their bust, right? We need an ace to get out of this, I think. Oof. Luffy doesn't really help us too much, though. I think we need the ace to be able to win this game. Hiori doesn't do anything besides just counter out. I'm not going to be able to play her next turn and do anything, like, I need. So. Sabo. Can I get lucky? Can we get a Luffy off this? Or do we just go game here? If we get a Luffy, we go up to seven. Burning that life doesn't do much of anything here either, besides draw us a card. Which potentially could be an ace. Let's try the thing. No ace, no nothing. Big whiff. Going five with Garp might not be the play here. I think we have to split it between Sabo, Pudding, and our leader to win this game. Okay. That's one. No zero cost, no veggie. Can we get around this? Six, seven, eight, right? And then, so eight, eight. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're chilling, we're chilling, we're chilling. Can we? Shirahoshi, though. Zero. Zero. Okay. I mean, he's got enough. He should have enough counter here. Yeah. All right. We tried it. Oh, snap. I apologize, team. I forgot to tell you guys. This will probably be the last game for today. And then we're going to dive into a couple other leaders here. Hopefully... Red, red, purple Luffy wins the poll. Because I have a spicy variant I would really like to start getting into. If not, if Sabo wins, it is what it is. Everyone's asking about Sabo for some reason. So I'll show you the updated Sabo deck that I've been cooking up. In any case, we're going to go over the, the winner for the event here on the channel. We'll talk about that probably in the next video. I want to like dedicate it. Not necessarily dedicate it, but like do it in an intro. That way everybody knows instead of in the outro here in this video, you know, but we'll go over that as well it's because we finally did reach 5,000 subscribers. So I appreciate everybody who uh, decided to come through and support the channel, show some love, say hi at locals or what have you, all the good stuff. A lot of fun. It actually took us no time to get here, which is kind of surprising. But in any case, I did say at five at 5k, we'll do a giveaway. I'll choose a random winner down in the comment section who has been actually commenting on videos with relevant relevant information. Somebody will win that and you guys can choose a playmat in which I've already showcased here in the community tab. Let alone I have three other playmats that are coming. They should be here this week, so stay tuned for those before you decide. But anyway, let's dive back in, up into this matchup. There is something I did want to talk about when it comes to Sakazuki though, especially when I have a lot of ace players at locals who actually really much or very much enjoy this deck. And we have a lot of Sakazuki players as well. You know, he's one of those decks that you take out to actual regionals, online regionals, if you want to win, because he, he is the best deck in the format still by far. Now, I think in this matchup though, I think I think Ace is favored. I really do. I think Ace is favored. Depending on if we hit with our leader ability. Being that 7k leader makes it very difficult for this man to remove bodies on board and get a swing in. Which is really cool, right? Like in this scenario, Ace is at 3. It was either going to be a Rob Lucci or a Houndblaze to remove this, to be fair. 
Which does suck, but it is what it is. It's the name of the game. But he can't swing with brand new. He can't he couldn't swing with leader here either. He's got four cards in hand left. And we get peel off in this matchup, so we can kind of take it slow. And we don't necessarily have to always stick a body on board. We just have to stick our ace on board and go for it most of the time. If we decide to draw, that might not be the best play here, though. Because just going ace mm, leaves us one dawn open. Let's swing for six. Let's try this instead. It might have been, like, way too greedy. Hmm. Yeah, that was probably way too greedy. I mean, now it's too late, so we can act actually just go five and hit another peel off here. Or put a blocker down. I think doing double draws would be uh, a no-no here. If we go six, we'll force a card from hand, at the very least. If we go seven, it might be a guaranteed hit, and then we can drop the Garp. Or we can just play it safe and drop down Viola. Yeah, Why not? Can we push it? Okay, that's fine. I mean, what triggers do you guys play besides Eruption? Nice age here, bud. Goes up to six. Speaking of which, putting in this matchup is also very, very good if you guys can find it. You gotta keep in mind that Sakazuki cycles through so many cards, which he's generally looking for key pieces to pop units on board. And I think that's another way in which Ace is really good in this matchup. I haven't seen a Monsherry in a Sakazuki in a while. Interesting. That used to be like, what, the 05 thing to do? Maybe this, this is just a personal preference, but I'd assume he only probably runs one of these. Pudding. Huh. I like it. This might not be your everyday Sakazuki, to be fair. I have seen some puddings in some Japanese lists. But, uh, I don't know how I feel about that. It is the best blue card ever printed. Definitely, hands down. You can beg to differ if you want, but just having that ability is just, oof, it's too strong. Let's go up to six here. Do we care about this? We don't have the 2Ks. We'd have to get rid of our whole, our whole hand. Two Luffy's, one Ace. We need to hit this. I think if we don't hit this, we're pretty much cooked. So we get the Ace. Do the thing here. Go up to 7k. Let's see here. So now we're safe for next turn, which is kind of nice. Because we have a blocker here as well. He'll have to bump that away with um, Hound Blaze at the very least. We can clear board here, like guaranteed. And then this way, either he walls up or clears our board, and then he doesn't have anything to attack our leader with. We don't really care about the brand new here, let's be honest. Brand new is whatever. Still five. I still think it's better to drop down the Viola here. Ooh. Alright, get rid of Luffy. We'll do this. Yeah, 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 what is that? Gekko Moria? Cool. Alright. So now he has to make a choice unless he has Ice Age and, like, another Rob Lucci in hand. Which is likely. But how likely? Because that is two cards in hand with no counter. If he cycles it through... There's an Ice Age. Okay, that's something. So what does he throw away here? And keep in mind, we're still at 7k, so... He still has to invest Dawn in putting in Leader to Swing. And brand new. While developing a blocker on board. Otherwise, next turn he just loses if, with Hiori and Ace. Six. He can't hit me. I don't know if you forgot or what. Five left to play with. Hmm. 
Rebecca could get back another brand new. No, he's doing one cherry's effect. Okay, cool. There's another Rub Lucci. So he has no Rebecca in hands. Plays down Lucci. Sure. You still can't hit me. I don't know if playing the Lucci there was the play. Because I don't think he did leader effect. Unless he did, I didn't pay attention to it. If not, he could have just cycled something else and drew. Oh, so he didn't do it. That's crazy. There's an ace. I guess we should take this game here. Three cards left. I guess we just go 10k, 10k, right? No, I mean, I guess we can't do that. Five, six, seven, eight. Can we find... Is it worth trying to get the Luffy here? Because that pushes us up to 10k. Bro. I am so sorry. When it hits, boys, it hits. I'm trying to tell you. We have enough Dawn to drop the Ace down on board as well. This should be guaranteed. Let's go ahead and do this one. And hopefully he doesn't have enough counter with the Ace. Can we get there? Yes, sir. Alright, this will be the last, last game. He wanted to throw it back, or throw it back, run it back as a rematch, and why not? Sakazuki, I feel like, again, is one of the, the harder matchups in the format, but I do think Ace has a very good game into him. Just like I said before, just because we can be that 7k leader in which he has to make a choice whether or not to attack into the leader or try to remove bodies on board and then not doing damage. Go ahead and drop the Garp here. We get absolutely pretty good. Actually, pretty good, yeah. Other than the pudding, unfortunately. Let's take the ace here. Now, we could just go seven. We could do Hiori things, but then I would have to counter out of next turn if he decides to hit me. Instead, we're going to put down Luffy here. I know it's weird, but playing Luffy... Maybe we can bait him into Hound Blazing him away. Because that'd be nice. And that'll just get rid of one Hound Blaze in the hand. I don't have to worry about it for later. I have no rhyme or reason other than just hopefully he tries to remove it. Or not. Okay. He's not a threat. That's fine. Sure. Oh. Well, this is awkward. He hasn't cycled yet, though. Okay, that's cool. I think he'd guard the hit if I decide to attack, so we're just going to drop pudding. You brought this on yourself? You go six? Okay. I think pudding in this matchup is still, like, one of the best things that you can do as ace in the Sakazuki. Just because they are always looking for pieces in their hand to have removal and bodies on board. So if you can just disrupt that in any way, shape, or form, it's pretty solid. It's kind of similar to the 4-drop law that makes them, you know, discard 2 cards. It's very good in this matchup. You know, 6. So perhaps he's about to remove the Luffy and Pudding here with Rob Lucci. Which is understandable, I get it. This 4 Don is active. Yeah, so that's definitely what he's doing. Sure. I kind of want to keep my Hiyori. At least till later. Alright, so we get a Viola. Which isn't necessarily, like, the best in this matchup at all. I generally don't care about, like, the life of my opponent when he's playing Sakazuki. Viola is easily removed here in this matchup as well. This will be pretty rough if we have to do it like this. I don't want to, like, take another life away. So let's go ahead and gamble this first and see what we can do. Ooh, not bad. We can get a Sabo here. Luffy would have been nice if he decided to leave it on board, but... We'll do Sabo things. We'll go up to 7k. Mm, 
we'll leave that. As much as I wanted to pop the Robolucci there and just go attacking into the Kuzan, but then that would put us at one life, and that's not something we want to do right now, especially this early. Do we care about the Kuzan, though? Because in the late game, if it sticks on board, he has easy removal. I, I guess we have to clear it at some point. Speaking of Kuzan, let's put that up top. The reason why we did that is because the Kuzan has no counter power, opposed to the Rebecca. Why would you drop Rabluchi here, or Gecko Moria? You don't have removal here. And we're 7k, which you probably forgot. It might have been better just to go 7 Luchi, 7 Kuzan, and then 7 Leader. The force cards out of my hand, especially this late in the game. But I guess getting Gecko Moria down on curve is still really, really strong. I'm just going to assume he has counter for next turn. Otherwise, he's in trouble. Because he knows I, I drew the ace, remember? Like, he knows I have it. Hmm. This wouldn't be too bad. Let's gamble first. Let's put this on top. And then we'll drop the Hiyori. I just needed anything that go on top here. Let's go and drop the Hiyori. We'll take the 2k. And we'll swap it with Ace. And then Ace can get down and start doing his thing. This pushes up to 7k. Yep. He's got 5 cards in hands. It's possible to go for game here. Because we know the life. Let's go 8. There's no other reason for me to attack anything else other than him. So he gets another Kuzan. So he still has 5 cards in hand, basically. He takes this one, he has to counter out. Nice. Okay. So he has 2 cards left. Which would mean if we go 8k with Ace... He'd give us both cards in hand to protect himself or take the damage or blocker. It's probably better to do that and save Garp for later. I think 7 will get there with the magic number, but let's, we can just push it just in case. Give me the Rebecca. Okay. All right. He's feeling confident here, boys. I mean, he's got, what, 5 attacks next turn? So he very well could just win game here if he does this correctly. He'd have to spend seven of his dawn just to get an attack off this turn. And if he doesn't win, he'd have to clear board. While putting down another blocker. So I'm pretty sure if this, if this turn doesn't... Oh, yep. Too bad. That's perfectly fine with me. I would think going face was probably the play there. Maybe. Like I said, unless he's investing blockers this turn, he's going to be in trouble. He doesn't have any removal. I'm just assuming that because he didn't attack with Kuzan first, instead he opted to attack with Hina. If he had the removal, he would just smack me first with Kuzan, get the minus four, and then bottom deck something. Because that makes the most sense. We'll grab the Sanji peel off here. I mean, he could still remove, but it just feels a little awkward to do it that way. Four done open. Okay, so no Luchi. Oh, he's actually attacking into Ace. I think we need him, though. Three done up. He can still bottom deck it. Oh, he's going again. Sure. Now he can't bottom deck it. Mm. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. I think he could have done that turn a little bit better, but I don't know what's in his hands. Let's pop this. Can I get lucky? Let's go, boys. 
drop this down pushes up to 7k and good game Suru. so he did have a blocker that's crazy well all right ladies and gentlemen i appreciate everyone who decided to make it into the end of the video today we had a lot of fun playing with blue yellow ace in which you guys wanted to see i don't know why this is a very very exciting leader to pick up and play here especially if you're new to the game if you enjoy ace this is a very very solid deck it just does have some consistency issues here so don't necessarily take it out to regionals or like the, the big 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 events and get frustrated the deck itself is still missing the key pieces until then when opo7 comes out this leader is not going to be tier one or tier two in the meta game he's still solid very fun to play out of the three brothers right now i do think black yellow luffy is the best unfortunately with sabo like going neck and neck just due to the fact that how many different builds that sabo can make how valuable this leader is very fun to play but that's currently in any case if you guys have any different variations of ace that you think i should try or cards i haven't used in here you think i should try let me know down in the comment section below but currently this is the list that i think you have to run to get this leader to function properly i think you have to run all of the brothers you have to run the garp engine you have to make sure you're seeing your five drops and without garp without the little guys it's a little bit more inconsistent but with my spicier cards in here with viola the pudding the kaido the sanji's pilaf and the raging tiger you and I might differ. You and your neighbor might differ. You know what I mean? We all have personal preferences. If there's something else that I could do here or I should try out, let me know down there. How about your community as well? In any case, we finally reached that sub goal at 4,500 subscribers here on the channel. So shout out to everyone who made that possible. I really appreciate everybody. All the love and the feedback that you guys have been giving me have been great, allowing me to grow here on YouTube. The community here that we are building is fantastic. I will have a discord up and running this month at least that's one of my major goals here i have to still have to do some how you say like uh some micromanaging i guess when it comes to the servers and all that sort of thing that's still being worked on but i'm hoping to have that up and running this month on a side note the next giveaway will be posted at 5,000 subscribers as well if you guys are interested in how to win these or how to take part the details are in the youtube community tab here on the channel you just have to scroll down a little bit and you guys will find all the details and all that sort of thing in any case i'll post the winner for this current giveaway on the tab as well but hopefully you guys do smash that like button stick around for future content when it comes to all things one piece i'll see you guys at locals and or in the next video stay safe out there i'll see y'all later